Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard, and I'd like to talk to you today about vitamin B12 deficiency. This is part of a series I'm doing on deficiencies that affect up to 50% of the American population. We did one on vitamin D, which affects 87% of the American population and one on iodine deficiency, which according to the World Health Organization affects up to 72% of the world's population. So these are really important topics and I invite you to watch the videos and read the articles associated with these deficiencies on my website at lifespa.com. There's also an article associated with this video on B12 deficiency that I invite you to read. Now, Tufts University recently did a study and found that 40% of the American population are deficient in B12 and said that this number is probably much greater because it's difficult to detect a B12 deficiency. Symptoms don't show up for five to six years. Um, people who, who get a blood test and have normal levels when they actually take the B12 have significant therapeutic improvements. So it's difficult to detect a B12 deficiency and it's unclear how much we actually need and how to measure that. Certain groups are at risk, however, of a B12 deficiency or a greater risk. One of those is a vegetarian diet. Vegetarians tend not to get adequate B12 in their diet because B12 is most abundant in meats, fish, eggs, and dairy products and really not very much available in vegetables. So most vegetarians have to supplement with vitamin B12. Uh, senior citizens are also at risk because their digestive strength weakens with age, which I don't like to admit to, and I think we can do a whole lot to change that, but the bottom line is that for most people, their digestive strength weakens as they get older, and their ability to absorb this very bulky and large vitamin it becomes compromised and causes a B12 deficiency that puts senior citizens at much greater risk. And anyone taking any vitamin or any uh, new, uh, medications such as anti-acids or anti-inflammatories are also at risk. Really any medication could compromise your digestive ability and also put you at risk. And this is important to, to understand. Now when you take in B12, it's absorbed or broken down in your stomach by the hydrochloric acid. And the stomach makes a, a protein called the intrinsic factor, which attaches itself to the B12 molecule and carries the B12 vitamin to the end of the small intestine where it gets absorbed into the liver where it becomes activated. If there is any compromise in the digestive strength, this very bulky vitamin doesn't get broken down, doesn't attach to the intrinsic factor because oftentimes the intrinsic factor is deficient or unavailable, or if there's any compromise in digestive health, the absorption of the B12 with the intrinsic factor to the liver becomes compromised. So if you have any issues with regard to digestion, things like being you know, addicted or needing digestive enzymes or digestive laxatives or having to stay on a restrictive diet to digest well, having to eat extra amounts of certain foods or none of other foods is an indication that you're probably not digesting well. You know, many vegetarians who are, you know, classically deficient in B12, they oftentimes become vegetarians because they don't digest well. And um, so it's important for us to stop and really dig in here and figure out how we can really maximize and optimize our digestive health. And I'm a big fan of that. I've written articles and done videos on that and I please and written some books about that. So please look into that as a possibility to really optimize not only your health, but your for sure your B12 absorption. This is really uh, critically important. If you have any symptoms of chronic fatigue, low energy, tiredness, mood concerns like anxiety, depression, or irritability, uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cognitive function, memory, swollen tongue, cracks around your mouth, a canker source, uh, burning feet. These are all classic indicators of a B12 deficiency. Neuropathies, diabetic neuropathies, Bell's palsy, things like that are oftentimes associated with a B12 deficiency. In addition, B12 deficiencies allow homocysteine levels to rise. Homocysteine is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. When homocysteine levels rise, then uh, heart attacks increase. 
uh, the production of plaque on your arteries increases. Um, the uh, cardiovascular disease uh, is also um, is associated with high uh, homocysteine levels as well as stroke. Interestingly, that high um, homocysteine levels is also associated with neurological and psychological disorders like depression and anxiety. Vitamin B12, with its supporting cast of B6 and folic acid, actually produces and manufactures neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, which are protective agents for our mood that support mood health um, and, and protect us against anxiety and depression. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, really severe conditions even that, de that degenerate the nerve tissue like MS and uh, neuropathies. So B12 is our, is our major protector for our nervous system, but B12 also protects the cardiovascular system. And that's an important understanding to know that when you optimize your B12 levels, you're also protecting your heart as well. B12 breaks down the homocysteine along with, uh, along with the, the effects of uh, folic acid and B6 into a very, simple, um, a very simple amino acid called methionine. So that's how, how uh, B12 works for the cardiovascular system, which is very, very important. B12, folic acid, and B6 also increase the production of a product that fights depression called SAMI, which has been shown in studies, many studies, to actually be as effective as the Western medicine drugs, antidepressant drugs. So B12 is a powerful tool for protecting our nervous system against stress and protecting our heart against stress. It really is that mind-heart uh, body connecting vitamin. So it's a beautiful, uh, a beautiful vitamin and something that we kind of insidiously become deficient in and we have to protect against it. Now, for years, we always thought we had to inject ourselves with B12 to get our energy up and they had to feel good with, with, uh, with, um, uh, with vitality and get the B12 that way. Recent studies, which is very exciting, have shown that sublingual pathways absorb as well as the shots of B12, which is amazing, and therefore we, we can actually take the B12 um, orally with a sublingual version of B12 folic acid and B6 and take that, I usually say about 4,000 micrograms of B12 for about a month and that in that month you should start feeling significantly better than maybe 1,000 micrograms a day thereafter to maintain the benefits if you still need those benefits. But B12 is now available in a very easily digestible form and that's a, a, a very important piece of this puzzle to get ourselves symptom free um, very, very quickly. So I invite you to, to read more about the, the, the magical effects of, uh, of B12. Um, you know, remember, B12 is one of the most powerful tools for our nervous system. Things like anorexia, uh, addictions, cognitive functions, not being able to sleep at night, um, you know, are all very powerful um, parts of the B12 puzzle to bring our health uh, back into balance. Please, I invite you to look at the article associated with this video uh, and find out how to diagnose, how to treat, and how to prevent against B12 deficiency. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. John Duyard.